Hello and welcome to New Filmmakers Los Angeles in partnership with Movie Maker Magazine. We're at the Cambridge Studio Los Angeles in West Hollywood. I'm here with Alex Perez with his movie, Branching Out. Let's take a look at a clip. Lottery bar. Seriously? Yeah. That's where you got hired just the other day. Here. He sent a picture too. Lucky son of a bitch. I tried out for Potter Brown like what, six times? Mm, seven times. I mean, I'm oak, maple, and pine. That's a pretty tough demographic to come by. Alex, it's so great to have you here in the studio. Thank you. Um, tell us a brief synopsis of your film. Uh, Branching Out is about a literal faggot, which is a bundle of branches, and we personified that to turn him into an actual character, a human. And um, it's basically about his journey to avoid the kindling program, which is this work placement for faggots when they turn 23. They get thrown into a fire and just used for fireplace kindling. And he doesn't want that. So he's going to go ahead and uh, give a public seminar on the historical significance of faggots when he realizes that people have kind of misinterpreted the definition and are using it in the wrong words. What was your inspiration behind making this movie? Uh, the inspiration was actually a photo that I saw on the internet. It was a bundle of two branches sitting on a couch, and the, the caption was, what are these faggots doing sitting on my couch? And I thought it was great. And uh, as the script developed, it turned into something that was more progressive, something that had meaning, something that wasn't just a joke. You have a great style of comedy. and uh, <laughs> Thank you. It was fantastic. And the actors really delivered it in such a wonderful way. Yeah. How, did, how was the casting process for you? The casting was actually very interesting. We had a lot of people... Uh, come in and, and act for the part of the therapist and the receptionist, but nobody wanted to be the faggot. And it was literally three days before we were going to start shooting, we had no lead. Oh, wow. And we were like, what are we going to do? Like, And it was through the magic of Facebook that I connected with a friend of a friend who was a theater major, and he was really interested in it. He said, this is something that's really going to challenge me as an actor, and really something different that people haven't seen before. So he was fully on board just in time. So Facebook works for casting, guys. It's <laughs> yeah, good. it does. Um, so taking on the roles as a director and a writer, how, mm -hmm. how, was, how was that for you? It was definitely daunting. Um, the morning I was supposed to pitch it, uh, it was actually like I was, I was second guessing myself. I was like, do I really want to go ahead and do this? And I went up and I pitched it and I got a lot of uh, positive feedback and everybody, a lot of people wanted to be a part of it. And so that's when I kind of knew that I had something special with the group of people that, that joined up with me. And um, we definitely had our fair share of challenges along the way, but I think we pulled something together that was really special. What was your biggest challenge making this movie? The challenges came like, uh, one after another. Um, first one was the casting. The second one, it was the designing, designing the uh, the costume, the faggot costume. We had a costume designer, and she just didn't give us what we wanted. So the morning we were shooting, we were redoing the costumes, and we went out and bought the jacket and glued all the sticks together and everything. And then we had an actor that didn't show up like the day he was supposed to show up, and so we had to go out to like a public area and literally ask people to be in our film. And oh, we wow. got we got the the role of Aaron um, was actually just like right off of the campus of school and he was had nothing to do that afternoon so we had to bring him over and and get him in it because the actor didn't show up so the challenge wow. is it was a very humbling experience to be like fighting tooth and nail to get this thing together but in the end nobody really could tell the difference you know everybody no one was could like, tell a different yeah. be the beauty of independent film yeah like, that, that's actually amazing everybody was really pleased with it nobody was wow you had to do that and that and so it was great it was you really touch on the subject i mean particularly a word that I don't think many people understand the meaning of that. Mm -hmm. What did you really want your audience to get from this movie? Uh, I like to, I really like to make audiences uncomfortable. So <laughs> when, when it starts off, you're kind of like, I remember when we first showed it to the first audience, you could hear kind of these like groans in the audience. Like, oh gosh, like, what, are we, what are we watching? And then it start, people realized like what we were going for, especially in the middle of the film when you realize what it's really about. Um, people understood it and so getting people to that point was fun because you kind of challenged them to kind of think in a different way and, and stuff like that. But in the end, we were, we were really happy because people were coming up to us and I had no idea that that's what it meant. And I had no idea that that was this historical significance behind it. And so that was really great. It was really rewarding. Who are your inspirations as a director? For this particular film, um, it was a lot of like Wes Anderson. It was a lot of Jared Hess who did Napoleon Dynamite. Just kind of these um, real, uh, uh, ground level kind of directors who kind of just, you know, with these just uh, grassroots approaches. Um, but as a filmmaker, I really, my favorite director is David Fincher, who, uh, who I just think is amazing. And, um, but for this, yeah, those were my influences for that film, for this particular film. It's like Wes Anderson, Jared Hess. Well, you made a beautiful film and Thank you've you. obviously worked really, really hard making it. What's it like when you just 
made this movie and then you get officially selected by New Filmmakers Los Angeles. It's amazing. It was the first film festival to, uh, to give us like a surface level shot. So they just saw what we had and they, they, they liked what we had. And it was, it was really, again, humbling and rewarding to know that somebody thought highly enough of our film to screen it in front with all these other great contenders. So. And did you have a good time at the, at the event? We had a great time, yeah. It was, it was the, the nicest venue we've ever been to. So. Did you hear that? The nicest <laughs> venue you've ever been to, AT&T Center, come and join us. Um, in five years time, where would you like to see yourself as a director? Well, since we've made Branching Out, we've started our own YouTube channel because everything's online now. And we've started making our own um, shorts on YouTube and hoping to garner a greater audience and use that to maybe gather um, funds for like another short and things like that. In five years time, doing a feature. That would, Great. Be, that would be the highlight. And I have to retract and go back, but um, you also had a fantastic composer for this movie. You actually uh, did your end credit song as well. How did yeah. you know about him? W through the color corrector, we were, we were asking for a composer and he recommended a friend of his and we met up with him, or I met up with him, and he, he really liked, uh, liked the story and he wanted to do all the, the musical cues. And then at the end, after it was all done, he's like, I'm really feeling a, an end credit song. And I was like, okay, I didn't really know what kind of song it was going to be, but he, uh, he sent it over to me and I listened to it and I played it for my parents who laughed and they thought it was great. <laughs> and then I sent it to my crew and they're like, we have to put this in there. And I really think that that final song just was the, the thing that kind of tied it up with a nice bow and just gave it like the final touch that we really, really were looking for. Well, it's a really good song and I was kind of grooving to it like <laughs> the end credits, so it was really good. Yeah. Um, Alex, it's a pleasure to have you here in the Thank studio. Thank you very much. Congratulations on your film. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us out. Thank you so much for joining us. If you'd like to find out more about New Filmmakers Los Angeles, you can sign up for our newsletter at nfmla.org. We'd like to thank Cambridge Los Angeles for this wonderful space where we've met some of the world's best new filmmakers.